Good evening. Thank you for coming. I hope you all enjoyed this evening's film. I thought it was very funny, and I'm very pleased to introduce you to the film's director, Junior Sakino. We also, we also have um, the fabulous Sebastian, Eugene Kim. And Annie, Jessica Van. And the unforgettable Long Wan, Dat Fan. First of all, Junior, I'd like you um, to tell us a little bit about the genesis of the project and how you became attached. Um, so, I, um, I went to film school, Kase Long Beach, and um, I met a group of people at the uh, school, and we, ever, we graduated about 2006, and uh, one of my classmates uh, is Jeff Mizushima. He's the uh, writer on this. He's a writer and editor on this film. And uh, we wanted to make a feature film for a long time. And uh, we had a couple of projects that we were working on. But uh, I, the project that we were developing uh, was a little bit of a, I guess, big scale, big budget film that uh, we, we just didn't have any chance. So um, we, I decided to kind of write something personal, something that you know, smaller scale, and um, uh, yeah, I, one day um, I went to a sushi restaurant and then I saw people doing sake bomb, and then I'm like, what the hell is this? I'm from Japan, I, I never seen anything like this before. So I thought that was kind of interesting, and uh, I kind of found the uh, new uh, Japanese-American culture or, Jap or Asian-American culture that I didn't know anything about when I was in Japan. So um, something that I, um, I, basically, I basically felt something that I never knew. Now I know being here uh, and, uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff is also, a, a, he's a, a Japanese-American. So I, I thought, what if we, you know, come up with an idea that, you know, the Japanese guy come from Japan and kind of experiencing something that he would never experience in Japan. So that was the uh, base, the concept. And, uh, you know, sake being uh, Eastern drink and beer being the Western drink, and we put two mixed together and you get pretty messed up drink. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I, I guess, you know, part of it's kind of fun. It's an American college drink, right? Like people do that. And, you know, everybody knows what sake bomb here. So, I thought that was a perfect title. So from there, so we started developing. And uh, it took about three years, but um, finally finished it this, uh, this March. And here we are showing it. And it's been a fantastic ride. So much, I'll, I'll get into the content of the film later, but I'd like to hear a little bit about the, the making of the film. And um, this is your first feature. So um, what did it take to get to be able to direct this project that you had written? You wrote it in order to direct it? Yeah, ha first draft was written by me. And then um, um, we, I had a friend, Sam is actually the DP of, yeah, let me, can I acknowledge yes, please. Sam? Um, he's the DP of my Saki Bomb. And uh, we also have a, um, Josh, Josh, where are you? The actor. You played Michael. Okay, Michael. And also Samantha. There you are right now. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, play um, Kamiko. Am I missing anyone else? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, we 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 have um, a group of filmmaker friends that uh, sort of wrote a uh, different version of Sake Bomb, uh, but uh, Jeff Mizushima ended up like. Uh, writing the whole, I guess, new version of Sake Bon, which is what you just saw. But um, the, the whole concept, um, you know, the Japanese sake maker come from Japan, experiencing this new American culture, and uh, or, or Asian American culture, that the whole premise was the same. But, you know, adding more of a, um, 
American aspect of American perspective to the story was something that you know we developed for the for for a good year and a half, I would say. And uh, yeah, so that's how we came about. So, um, what a cultural identity is obviously such a massive theme in the film, and yet one of the things that struck me is the first big joke is that. Um, Americans have such a stereotype that all Asians, Asian Americans look the same, and yet you've got some pretty interesting casting of the Japanese people in the film. Can you talk a little bit about that? <laughs> Don't we look all the same? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> you know, it's funny because, um, like I said before, um, like. I was born and raised in Japan, and I really didn't think about anything uh, different type of race. Pretty, uh, Japan is pretty much, um, uh, like you don't get to see many other races in Japan. So um, uh, coming here in LA, meeting a lot of different people, like, and then also like Asian American culture, like you, I, I was basically shocked to see that different Asian American cultures here. and. Uh, yeah, when I was uh, developing this, I thought like I want to put as many different aspects of Asian, also Asian jokes in it, uh, because that became really the part of the story. And uh, uh, yeah, we put. I mean, initially it was written just for Japanese, but uh, I ended up finding this amazing actor, <laughs> Eugene Kim. He's Korean, <laughs> so uh, I don't know if you noticed, but. Um, so we basically changed the setting of the uh, character where you know the, the father met the uh, Korean mother and then uh, so he's a Japanese Korean American uh, it was uh, subtly uh, like we had a picture of mom wearing the Korean traditional uh, clothes and you know very subtle thing you all knew you understood that right you saw that, <laughs> that was, oh that's a Korean outfit <laughs> Yeah, that, I see how that mixes now. And that guy's name is Kim. So I see what's going on here. <laughs> Actually, when I, when I had gotten the audition for my manager, um, I didn't think, I was like, eh, there's no way I'm going to get this because, I mean, I, it, it says Japanese actor preferred, you know, on it. And, you know, normally it says, like, you know, any ethnicities. I mean, obviously you can't have any ethnicity playing this part. But, you know, it's, it, typically when you're, when, you're, when you're auditioning for something like this for... Um, uh, a, a, a person of, of color, is that the right term? <laughs> I, uh, you, they, they, want, they want it to be pretty authentic. And I, I didn't think that I had a shot at it. Um, and then, uh, I mean, you know, insecure actor thoughts and blah, 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 blah. But, uh, but you know, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine told me, uh, you know, t had a good point. Um, like Daniel Day-Lewis, he played Lincoln, you know, and, and, and who played Superman just now? I mean, it's like, it's where it's 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 a privilege as an artist to be able to to go and be able to play different parts, and hopefully I can go outside of the Korean box. Like it's it's hopefully I can you know I I hope that Hollywood wouldn't hold me into a just a Korean you know uh, Korean box. I, I I feel like I have a lot more versatility than that. Isn't outside the Korean box Silver Lake or is that? <laughs> no, it's Thai Town actually in a little. Thai Town, Thai Town. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Thai Elvis. <laughs> So can you talk a little bit about the story development? I mean, this seemed like it was written for you, Eugene. I mean, you must have been thrilled. Um, so I want to hear about the audition process, but first of all, I want to hear about the story development and the dialogue. Yeah, I mean, the, the many, I mean, almost all the jokes um, was really uh, written by Jeff. And uh, I mean, some of the scene that that maybe a little too over the top uh, actually had happened in my life. And uh, so the, I guess, yeah, you could say that part of um, the story was based on a true story. And uh, yeah, it's pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, but we, you know, I think the, uh, the strength that we had was, um, you know, we, we wanted to, um, use that as a comedy, you know, and then still address the issues that we may have here in the, in, in the States. But um, yeah, instead of, you know, being too confrontational, I thought, you know, um, making satire, you know, comedy uh, is the best way to, um, you know, talk about 
uh, things that we don't really talk, like um, a lot of Asian jokes. Um, I, I feel like sometimes if uh, white people are trying to do that, that becomes a little too offensive. So, um, you know, they've been sometimes too PC on it that I, I feel like, yeah, you know, I mean, they have a point, you know. But um, uh, as much as we want to, like, focus on those things, but, you know, like, as Asians, like, we, we can totally tell that kind of jokes, you know. And we want to also, um, I mean, the, the bottom line of this theme, like, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but, you know, the... We wanna, we wanna, like as Asians, you know, we have the story to tell. Like we, we, did, you know, we're not just Asians. We are human, okay? <laughs> so that's something that, like, you know, I felt like that was really important to 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 have a base on. And then from there, you know, like some some mainstream media don't maybe don't talk about, but maybe we as a as a person, like you know, people that we li that lives in LA, has all this encounter like that uh, that you you saw in the film and uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to focus on those things and then make a fun movie entertainment. I feel like I feel like it's the film is is far more than just about I mean the cliched idea of, of Asian identity I think it's a lot more just about identity um, in general with in, in American society where uh, you live in a culture that that forces you to label label yourself regardless of your 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 skin color or your um, what country you're from, your ethnicity, what sexual orientation or religion you you are in. You're you're forced to label yourself, and 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 at the same time you kind of at the same time lose yourself. Um, weirdly enough, when you're when you're identifying who you are, you, you kind of lose yourself. And um, I think with the extreme of who Sebastian is and how angry he is. He just represents that frustration, um, the caricature of that frustration, and the Naoto just resembles or re represents this, this unconditional love, this purity, um, and and it's beautiful to see that yin and yang. I think that's what I uh, that's what I love about the film is to see the the dark and the and the light in that um, in that relationship. You are the dark, <laughs> dark. And so was there um, any improv in set? I know that you and Dad both have that background of sketch, improv, stand-up comedy. Did, were you bringing your own stuff to the dialogue or? Was there any improv during my fucking scene? <laughs> it's just, uh, it, you know, it's, it's funny because when, when Jenya was directing me on that, that was on day, day zero or day one. And uh, if you guys have ever been on certain sets, they have to turn off the AC so we don't have the background noise. So here I am with makeup on with Mary Carey, a real porn star, and they had, he had me do three hours of fucking, like of different the positions. The hottest month of the year. Yeah, it was so like hot, and we're like out filming in downtown, month. and you know, I learned a lot about porn. Like they actually have to change, <laughs> they have to change that, you know, reset the tracks, or like change the camera angles, and then like, you know, we're gonna turn off the AC again, and then we're in a new position, and then like, you know, you're, you're pretending like you're pumping away, so we, <laughs> The dialogue, I think about 75% of it was actually improvised. And if you ever, once this gets on Blu-ray someday, um, I think it's like five and a half solid minutes that he edited oh, together of yeah. me just heckling the girl as I'm <laughs> pumping away. I, know this, I don't know how to make her. this trick clean here. He actually sneezes on her. Yeah, he's, he's like, ah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's moaning, and I'm like heckling her, and then like just saying all these racist stuff. But it's funny, too. But uh, yes, there was a lot of improv. I like she's looking at the nose like, Yes, <laughs> improvising while fucking. This is going to be good for SAG Foundation there. Yeah. They're talking yeah. about sex. Move on quickly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a, I used method, too. A lot of method technique. <laughs> yeah. Porn, channeling, you know, a lot of stuff. Yeah, good. Good opportunity. It makes mom proud. I can't wait. Yeah. To, she gets this is where all your theatrical yeah. training yeah. came yes. in handy. <laughs> yeah, all the way from Vietnam, just old school, you know, <laughs> technique. So, and, and that's what I was alluding to earlier. You're a, you know, Vietnamese heritage and Annie, yeah. your heritage is? I'm Chinese Taiwanese. And so actually my character originally was Korean mm -hmm. and they changed it because I'm not, but I guess they didn't change yours. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> half, half yeah. <laughs> Japanese, yeah. But well, if Korea had sake, I would have made a... So would you, <laughs> so would you. Um, Good point. But going back to that improv thing, we actually didn't improv and anything. Um, I think I had like two lines that were kept <laughs> when, I, that I, when I did improv. But it was all like the, the, I mean, so well, I mean, it was so well written and 
Um, it was there was just so much to it. It it it, it um, we stuck we stuck to the dialogue. But to was, your credit, it was like two shots and move on, right? It was yeah. So you didn't was, have like a whole lot. We really of room didn't have time. To, no, yeah. we literally. I mean, we had I don't know how many twenty two days of shooting, and um, and this was in September. Like this was a really really quick turnaround and. Um, I don't have to tell these guys that. I mean, the the post, like, well, when we found out we got into South by Southwest in January, which was three months after we we wrapped, right. they had like a month to finish editing and sound sound and color correcting and doing all that, and then it just it was just a whirlwind, and then it just all happened. But uh, but yeah, we really didn't have time to kind of, you know, we had so many pages to do, so we didn't we didn't really have time to to play around in improv, but. Um, luckily, we had really amazing writing from Jess, Jeff Misajima and, and Junior, and uh, yeah. I want to ask all of you about the um, auditioning process and what your audition was like. Oh, I, when I was when I was auditioning, I was I'm, I'm touring a lot, so I'm touring doing stand-up comedy around the, the world, and uh, I was about to fly out the next day, so I went over to my acting <coughs> coach's place. We're gonna lay out a tape for Junior's the casting for Saki Bomb. And at first I was like, a porn star? I don't know if this is, oh God. Like, what are they gonna show, what's going on? And I hadn't even read the whole script yet, just that one scene, which is basically sex and heckling, you know? So I, I, we laid it out, we did the tape, and I committed the best I could with the character and all that. And then uh, as soon as I, we, I flew and I landed in Michigan to do a show in Interlochen, my manager calls me and she says, you know, you booked the part, you booked Saki Bomb off the tape. And I was like, oh, I'm excited, but also I'm like, I didn't read the script, so I'm like a porn star. I don't know what's going to happen here. But, uh, and then we came back and met up with Junior, and we actually had a discussion on the message. Because if you look closely, there's actually an underlying message, and it's a very diverse cast. You know, there, there's black people in there, there's, um, there's Jewish, supposedly there's Hispanic, there's uh, gay, you, you name it. It goes on and on and on, you know. So, um, and then when I finally read the screenplay after I had a discussion with Junior, the whole thing that we talked about the message, the message is actually in this screenplay. And then I, then you know, it changes throughout the filming and then when I actually watched the first screening, um, it really, really resonated with me, it really, it really affected me because I feel so, I have, I'm very fortunate to have two other movies coming out of this and like, just to be a part of this project, it, it just means a lot to me, especially as an Asian American where I, you know, I, I do a lot of these jokes, but deep down inside, like I'm always fighting, I mean, you, Eugene, you know this. You're a fellow comic. Yeah. Deep down inside, you're actually fighting racism yeah, while it's joking tough. about it. It's as a stand-up comedian. I mean, I guess I, I, when I first started doing stand-up, I, I kind of I didn't do I didn't do Asian jokes. I mean, Travis, you know about that. But uh, I I I, w I didn't, and I just did a lot of blue, kind of like not so great, kind of fart jokes, and then. <laughs> And then, and then I went and saw, wow, you know, I looked in the mirror, I'm like, wow, you, you're Asian. And so, I mean, how can't, you can't deny, I can't deny what I go through in Hollywood. I can't deny the frustrations that I go through. And that's what I need to talk about. That's the truth. Yeah. And, and, and so, yeah, there's, there's, there is. Bit touring as a comic, I did shows like in Kansas City, Missouri. And then this is before they had the, the was it FCC when they actually shut down on the, you know, they locked down. Is it FCC? Was that the, or is that the FAA? Was that, uh, is that the air traffic control? Sure. But, sure. No, but I was on the radio station, <laughs> and this would be whole, the whole Janet Jackson boob thing, you know what I'm talking about? And then they, Howard Stern got in trouble and all that. But um, I was on the radio station back then, and I was touring, and people go on the air, and they're like, hey, is this dad fan? Yeah, my dad taught me the only good Vietnamese is a dead Vietnamese. He was, he was, like, his dad was in the Vietnam War. I'm like, Jesus, what year is this? I'm touring, and I was like the only Asian guy for like miles out there. So I actually saw firsthand like the racism that goes on out there. So to, to, be, to answer your question, to be casted in this diverse, you know, this, this diverse cast being in this project, the message, because it's, it's like a comedy dramedy, you know, and it really means a lot to me to be a part of the project. So I feel very fortunate. I think this is a film that breaks barriers. So congratulations. And Jessica, what was, what was the auditioning process like for you? Um, this was actually one of those amazing audition processes where I didn't have to audition, which was incredible. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I wait all year for that to happen. But um, I had met Jeff, the writer, at a film festival the year before when I had a different movie screening. And, you know, he, you know, got my contact and I didn't think anything would ever come of it. And then all of a sudden I got this email that was like, you know, read this script. We think you'd be perfect for this character of Annie. And I read it and I was like, great. And I think meanwhile, actually, they were, they put out a breakdown for yeah. a Korean Annie. And I think they were <laughs> casting unbeknownst to me. 
But um, but I guess they just offered it to me, and I was really excited because I loved the scene. I was like, this is hilarious. I love the way they get at each other. So. Bitch. <laughs> No, what I went through, my gosh. No, when I when I auditioned for that film, oh my god! Like I, I went in, I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna get this. Um, little did I know, I was being super method and being like super <laughs> self-deprecating. And I went in, and, and I. And that's the perfect state I, of mind before you audition. I'm not like, gonna I get this suck. role. I hate yeah. myself. No, and I, I, I go in, and <laughs> you don't understand. These there were three scenes, and it was probably like six pages of like monologues. <laughs> And it was just like, and it was, it had to have been like, it had to, it had to be sork. It was like, but it was like, it had to be pr it, fluid. And I just remember going to Brad Gilmore, I was doing a pre-read and I, was, I did it. And I, um, I, I did one of the scenes, I did one of the monologues and I fumbled and I, and I, and I kept going. And then um, at the end of the audition, I go, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really connect with that one. That <laughs> and then, and then Brad goes, Actually, that I actually thought you did a pretty good job, and I was like, oh, okay, probably, probably shouldn't have said anything then. <laughs> 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 and then I walked out, being like, damn it! I uh, it's just I shoot, shot myself in the foot. I just totally said what it was the, the rule of an actor in audition is never to out yourself and say that sucked. And I did that, and I walked out uh, like completely just, you know, tail between my legs. And, and I, I went, uh, to see my sister in North Carolina. Well, no, I was planning on seeing her uh, that Monday. And then I got a call from my manager saying, uh, they want to see you. They, the director wants to meet you. They want to, they want to bring you in. And I was like, no way. Is it worth me moving my, 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 my flat? I want to see my sister. I want to see my parents. And he said, yeah, you better, you better move it. So I moved it. I went in and I actually went in and I, I was a little bit more prepared. And I, I actually, for the first time, didn't care. I actually was like, you know, I'm going to give it up. I really don't care what happens, and I just want to do good work. And I think that was kind of the epiphany that I had, where when I went into the audition, I played. And I, the last scene, I had to, to cry. And I was, it, it, was like, it, was, it was pretty kismet, because it, was, it, it became so fluid, and I, and I connected with the character, and I remember seeing Junya and Hiram, and they were cracking up, and then that moment that, I was, that I'm talking to, to Naoto, and it, I, I actually, I felt it, and it just like, it made sense, and it was just like, it, 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 it was amazing. It was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had as an actor. Um, and, then, uh, and, then when I, and then I got it when I was in North Carolina with my family, and we were flipping out, and it was amazing. And then uh, they were like, okay, we're doing chemistry reads, and I was like, we're doing what? We're doing chemistry reads? We're, this is like crazy. Like I'm, I'm doing chemistry reads with, with actors. That's such a cool experience. I've never done that before. And, and we did it and it was such a, it was a really um, eye-opening experience because you realize, you know, you just want to, people think you, you got to do it perfectly when it's not the case. You just have to have the essence. You have to, you got to trust, you got to trust yourself and you got to trust, um, you know, what you breathe into the character and, and just go with it. And, and uh, I don't know, it, it really was kind of a, 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 a uh, I don't know a turning point in my career as an actor. It is pretty cool because most of the cast that I've met, they're, they're I mean other cast members that are in here too that are not on the panel, but they're played pretty pivotal parts of the movie. They uh, they're very humble. I mean this guy is the lead, and I've met with him many times, and he's just very very humbling about his experience and how his approaches and all that stuff. And and I've been fortunate enough to do other movies with Disney and all that stuff where you don't have that same feeling, that same chemistry with these caliber people. And here you, you get to see the process at the beginning where the people just, you know, the cast is just being honest about it. I mean, like he approached it, like, and, th and that helped me too, just basically coming in and just not caring. Because me, I was like, I gotta get on a flight tomorrow. So I don't know if I'm gonna book this or not. Here we go, let's lay it out. And then you book it and it's such an amazing experience, you know. So for you, Junior, as the director, you're, you're assembling your cast. What, what do actors do um, in an audition with you to set themselves apart? Um, I, I think, I mean, it's a really tough, uh, when, you, when, you, um, you know, when you write a script, you know, you do a project for a long time, and it is, sometimes it's amazing how, what ac actors can do, uh, their bring something that I would never expect, you know, performance-wise, and little nuance that I, 
um, think, things that I basically didn't expect. Sometimes, like the moment when they do it, I, I love that moment. Um, and so, I, I don't know. It, it, I think it all depends on the project. You know, like uh, I mean, this one I w really knew exactly what kind of cast you know I wanted to get. And um, when Eugene came in, um, he you know he he had. Um, like that, like he said, the, the long monologue, and uh, you know this guy needs to be really, really um, annoying at the same time. Um, uh, <laughs> <has a s> <laughs> well, he's sure. annoying, <laughs> uh, but he has to be annoying. But he has to be, he has to have a little bit of a charming, you know, uh, quality to it. And um, it <laughs> it's okay. You're still annoying. <laughs> you played, you played a good likable asshole, Eugene. Is this What's and, happening? And you like those assholes. <laughs> So, so the, these kind of a quality, I, I think, um, as a director, when 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 I get to see the real, you know, actor playing this character that we develop for a long time, um, uh, it can be amazing when we find something that beyond what we expect. So, uh, those are the moments. But, you know, with also you you you'd also have to sort of you know get that to you know to to the level where you want. So. Uh, I think part of it, I think the casting director really helps to get them on the same page. You know, this character needs to be doing that and has to be, you know, how they're supposed to feel. And these kind of things that, um, like the process of casting is actually one of the more uh, amazing moments when you actually see a movie coming together. So, um, I mean, in terms of like, you know, how, how to stand, stand out from, you know, the rest of the people, um, uh, it's it's really tough because um, you have to really find your own soul in you know when you read a character. Um, I'm sure you you do research and you know you might also like you know wear something that you think that suits for the character and whatnot. But um, the bottom line, to me at least, to me is uh, w when I see the characters speaking from inside out. You know uh, because. On screen, you can read that. You can see this guy, guy is just saying the dialogue, or he he's actually feeling that. Those things that you know, like when you when you have an audition and when you do that with the chemistry, we uh, you can totally see that. So um, I don't know exactly how they do it, but you know, some people actually do have the magic to to make that happen. I, I want to ask you a little bit, little bit about. Um, I'm going to ruin his name, Gaku Hamada, who played Natao. Um, he's, he is actually Japanese, and does he live in America? He's German, actually. Um, <laughs> brilliant actor. <laughs> and uh, great my makeup. Um, he's white and Aryan. Right, it's crazy. Right, yeah. <laughs> How was it for you, Eugene, working with him? Because he, he d wow. does he speak limited English, yeah, actually? He, uh, not just limited, he just didn't speak any. Um, and, but it, was, it worked really well. It was, it was, it worked really, he, he was very open and, you know, all those years of Meisner where you're like working off of behavior, um, really go into great effect. But, um, he knew his cues, like, like a professional, like he knew his cues. He knew, he knew when to say his line. It was, he never was cued to say anything. He knew exactly when to say his line after I said my line. And, um, it, it worked perfectly for you know it, it worked out well and 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 the way we communicated uh, between takes is 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 uh, we both had iPhones and we had Google Translate and so we would go you know it is really hot in here and then translate from English to Japanese and it would go da 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 you know and then I'd be like oh and then he'd be like he'd say it back and it's like you know no shit you know and then it would come back I'm like it's crazy it was really it was. That we, I, I could show you if there's a way to project. We have probably pages and pages of, of hilarious dialogue between the two of us, and we we just developed such a wonderful bond. We had chemistry from the moment we skyped when he skyped when we skyped from Japan and we did a, a, a scene. I, I immediately loved the guy, and then the last scene that we shot was that scene where I apologized to him, and and it was sad to leave him, and it was real, you know, like I was really sorry, and I loved the guy, um, and he was just such a, a just a it was such a privilege to work with that guy. And you said you waited till like when he, he waited. So you said the last word, word he and knew. he knew what that word was. He had to study that word, word. and then he so knew what know. the cue. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, so that was nuts amazing. to act I mean, and not even know what you're saying. When I when I um, got him, um, uh, he's by the way uh, 
uh, really famous actor in Japan. Like seven films coming out this year, right? Yeah, he has seven films coming out this year. And uh, yeah, he's been acting since he was nine. So uh, if you go to Japan, if you s see his face, I mean, people probably know. And uh, so he's really pro uh, in he then, um, but when it comes to English, uh, he speaks really no English at all. <laughs> so when I cast him, um, I was a little worried because I, I mean we do have some dialogue, um, uh, English dialogue, and uh, um, but I, I don't know. There's something about him that, he, he, yeah, the magic that I was talking about. I, I think that uh, he had a maybe a month of training speaking that, and he's actually phonetically, you know, just saying uh, all this dialogue without really understanding what he's saying. And, uh, and it's yeah. true. And, uh, but for some, you know, for some reason it works, you know, I mean, it did work with Eugene, and um, I'm glad they got along. Um, but yeah, this, he, he had that special um, kind of a, a skill to understand, and the moment you know when he say the dialogue, even without really understanding, I, I think uh, that was really special. And I know this is an American Japanese production, co-production. So, will you be distributing in Japan with English subtitles? Yeah, hopefully they'll. Uh, well, Japanese release will be it will most likely happen uh, next year, and uh, we're working on the U.S. production uh, distribution right now. Before we wrap up, I'd like you to tell me a little bit about um, the festival circuit. So for the actors who are involved in a film of this sort of budget at this sort of level, how involved are you? What does it mean to travel with the, with the film? Do you travel with the film? And how does social media play into it? Are you having to market the film? Can you talk to us about that? Um, I'm actually a huge cyber marketing maniac. I'm, I, have, I have four Facebooks. I probably shouldn't say that. Facebook's going to shut me down. I have, like, I have four Facebooks, they, they max out at 5,000 each, and then it goes out to an indirect network of a quarter million. There's Instagram, Twitter, and what happens is I actually communicate with their executive producer, Yuko, in Japan. And what I love about this is at this level, it's actually an international collaboration where we all work together. And I spiderweb networked all of us together, and I found out we got distribution. So I'm touring, and then I find out through the web that we got distribution in the UK, and then that we were at, you know, showcased at South, South by Southwest, premiered there. And then the, we won like best screenplay in the LA Film Festival, but we all shared the news together. Like we all are texting each other, going through the Facebook, Instagram, and like we're tracking what's going on, communicating with Japan, and like it, anticipating, you know, Texas. You know, we hit Texas, and then we're hitting Hawaii next, and then we're gonna we're just gonna strategically hit down the coast, the West Coast. And Jinya's been running ragged like all over the country. He just flew back from Michigan, and it's like the cyber marketing and social. I, I mean, I teach this is crucial. It's like crucial to market this. So that way we can get it out there and get distribution and all that. So on my end, I feel very fortunate that the executive producer is, is trusting me that I'm able to communicate with my fans and go, watch this movie, support this movie. It's going to hit your state. It's going to hit Michigan next. And, uh, and then, you know, they're texting me saying, hey, it was sold out in Austin or it's going to be, you know, it's sold out in Hawaii or whatever it is. So, so from my end, it's, it's a very, very exciting thing being a nerd myself, you know. Marketing. It's definitely amazing that the film circuit, I mean, that to, to have your fir first film festival to be at in Austin, Texas at South by was probably one of the most ex amazing experiences so of my life. So much fun. Yeah, I mean, Jessica was out there and we're all. A bunch of us went out, like yeah. um, Chrissy Fit, who, Chrissy Fit, yep. Jen Liu went out, who else? Um, Gaku Hamada, yep. And, Me. and you guys were partying, and I'm on my side touring. And I'm oh, like, yeah, oh, where I were wanna, you? I want to party. <laughs> it was well, crazy. I was working. Gaku, no that kid Gaku can drink. Yeah. But and then these guys are yeah. part there, have all this alcohol. I mean, that like, last scene where we're hugging at the airport, I'm, all I'm thinking is don't puke on Gaku. Like, we, <laughs> I, didn't even, I actually real, we didn't know we were shooting that until um, after we went out. <laughs> and um, then I get a wake up call from the first lady. He's like, hey, get up, dude. We have to do one more shot. I'm like, what? I'm still drunk. And then it was a really, I shouldn't even be saying that, but it was one of the worst experiences of my life. But yeah, South by Southwest was fantastic. And, and, and it, we sold out every single screening and it was like such a humbling, like I was like, I was so taken up every single night that we, that we screened and we, we screened four nights. It was, the, it was such an overwhelming response and um, to share it with um, 
with Sam and Junya and, and, and the cast like was was a memory that I'll, I'll never forget. So yeah, it was it was really cool, and I'm excited to go to Hawaii. So that's gonna be fun. And then uh, yeah, I'm excited to. I, mean, I would love to go to London. I mean, and apparently it's it's getting UK distribution. So um, and you're going to Rain Dance, right? Yeah, that's yep. what I, not officially. <laughs> or I don't, yeah, that's, we're not supposed that's to. That's not. Yeah. We don't know that. Oops. No, we don't know <laughs> that. Spoiler. Yeah. Anyways, um, so, <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Sorry, Rewind. <laughs> So it's, I, I think it's interesting that you knew a month before you went to South by Southwest. I mean, you hadn't finished the film, but you knew that you were in. Can you tell us how that process works of? Well, it, it, we all submitted before the deadline and it's all, you know, rough cut. And, um, but uh, yeah, we told him that we're still working on it, you know, and then we told him, hey, you know, this might be changed a little bit and here and there. But, um, but I mean, the basic, um, storyline and editing was pretty much locked at the top at that point so yeah um we were lucky to um you know have them you know see the film and you know then we constantly push them hey you know we're still working on it and all that stuff and i think a lot of films uh, play, uh goes like that where like you're literally cutting or you know color correcting or you know composing or doing the sound a day before the screening i mean uh Especially, you know, playing that such a big festival, um, they w and they don't really have time, right? So, uh, once you realize that you are in, I mean, there's no going back. You know, you gotta finish it, no matter what. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it, we really uh, we were fortunate to, you know, play uh, or pre have a premiere there, but we had to maybe push. Um, for the whole like schedule, maybe a couple months. Lucky you know. that they're Japanese, you know, and they're just really hard workers. So <laughs> they're quick and efficient and they don't go to sleep. I think that helped. Yeah. yeah. Do we have any questions from the audience? Okay, so. So the question is about budget and back end deals and distribution deals. Um, I'm not allowed to say the specific numbers on the budget, but um, I would say million, less than a million dollars, obviously. And um, we f it, it was a co production, so we partially found, uh, found the investor from Japan and also from the US. So we put uh, we were lucky to have this uh, private investor. So that's how we basically put the money together. And uh, yeah, we are in the middle of the distribution deal. So hopefully we'll get, you know, pay back them. I mean, that's my goal, but we'll see how what happens. And I'm hoping so because there's talk of, am I allowed to say what you guys are working on or no? Uh, the, let's yeah. not go there. Okay, let's not go there. All right, never mind. I was just, just thinking about something in Vietnam. Sorry about that. Was something else. Yeah. I went to, um, recently went to the Japanese American Museum. They had an opening of a Hapa exhibit. And in it, they said that just in a few years, like three or four years, over 50% of Japanese American people in the United States will be Hapa meaning not pure, but mixed right, with right. other ethnicities. And I'm just wondering if there is a different perspective in Japan or in um, your native countries you know, um, from, from the American experience regarding um, cultural homogeneity and assimilation and mixing with other ethnicities and cultures. I, I, yeah, certainly. Um, I feel like there is um, a movement where you know the world is really becoming so small. Like you meet so many um, uh, uh, foreigners in Japan now. Back in the day, you hardly see. Um, and then now, uh, I guess being in LA. Well, LA is a little different because I mean everybody comes to LA, you know, to start, and then you know they might move to somewhere else. But um, this whole mixed and uh, uh, I guess cross-cultural experience is actually really happening uh, everywhere I see. And um, 
I, I think it's a great thing. Um, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, uh, cultural assimilation is the way to go, uh, because partially, I mean, uh, being Japanese native, um, I do still, um, you know, uh, love my culture and whatnot, but I also do uh, love um, Asian American culture and Japanese American culture, and I'm learning those things. And uh, these are the really uh, interesting things. Uh, like uh, like I said, sake bomb. Uh, if I won here, I would never, you know, heard of sake bomb, right? and that's part of the, you know this mixed culture, right? So, uh, to me, you know, coming to this big city and then, uh, you know, this whole new culture being born, uh, I think that's an amazing thing. And I hope that still goes around, you know, to, to get, you know, something, uh, I guess everything evolves, and I, I really like that. What about Korean, Vietnamese, and Taiwanese? Of us getting mixed with the other cultures? Well, I, is there, do you find there's a, like a different perspective in the United States versus, like, have you traveled to, well, I, I, no, I, I was born in Saigon, Vietnam, but as a baby, I, I moved to San Diego. We moved to San Diego, and I, me touring across, you know, I, I meet millions of people across the country. There's nothing that I love more than to see, like, when we all eat together, there's a whole diverse group at the table. Like, if we're all eating pho, right, the Vietnamese noodle soup, you see, like, people of all different races sitting there and then enjoying a different culture together. Um, but I've seen a whole mix of things. I, I've seen people here in L.A. that have never had Indian food, you know. And then I've also seen a lot of people in L.A., like tons of, like, if I go pho, like, I mean, by a show of hands, how many guys know what pho is? See what I'm saying? Look at this. Just about every, I mean, every race possible in here has, has tried pho. But then again, I've been to places like Kansas or Kentucky, and they've never seen, you know, there's towns where they've never seen an Asian in person before. So I, I've experienced both ends of the spectrum. But uh, it brings great joy to me to see, to see the mixture, though. But I yeah. guess in terms of like what it's like over there versus what it's like for an Asian American or I guess an Asian who's not in their native country, if that's what you're asking. Like, I think it's actually really fascinating because I go back a lot and I'm actually going back to Taiwan in a week. And I have a lot of friends who work over there or were born there. And to them, the whole concept of being Asian American is really foreign. Because to them, you know, growing up, say, in Beijing, everyone is Chinese and, and they don't really have that kind of um, complex about being, oh, I'm, I'm Asian American, I don't have the same rights as everyone else. So they come here and to them it's a completely brand new concept. They're like, oh, okay, you know, like Asian American movies here address that they're being stereotyped against and this kind of thing and that kind of thing and they just, they don't grow up with that so that's not on their radar. So it's actually quite interesting because I've spoken to a few filmmakers or Asian Americans who went back to do film in Asia and they mentioned that, you know, a lot of times Asian American films don't really translate over there because they just, they don't quite understand. Yeah, yeah. same goes with stand-up. I mean, like, uh, it's a lot of people who travel to Vietnam and back. My, my stand-up stuff wouldn't work over there. It's culturally different. And I wish I could answer your question better, but I've been to places like Italy and other countries that are non-Asian for filming and all that. I, I actually haven't been to Vietnam, you know. But one day, maybe. Well, because yeah. that's exactly what, what was my point when, when I was in Japan. I really didn't know anything about Asian, Asian American cultures. And that's why it was really interesting to see uh, so many diverse cultures. And, and uh, there are people here that, you know, they live like regular people, you know, like part of our culture and, uh, and in L.A. at least. And... Uh, you know, when they talk about it, uh, none of the uh, main, main uh, mainstream media, they don't really talk about that stuff. And so, yeah, I mean, that's why it's really hard to, for them to understand what, you know, we are, you guys go through as an Asian American. And uh, I, I think, you know, uh, if we uh, get a chance to, you know, portrait our lives a little bit more often, Probably people in you know in Asia understand. Oh, there are you know whole diverse Asians are actually living in in the states. But um, because we don't see that in, in, in Asian culture, we only see predominantly white story. You know, so that's that's what it was. I, you know, I wanted to really focus on that part of the uh, story to show you know the rest of the world that there's people like us out here. So just to wrap up, oh, one last question here.
So the questions for Eugene, which scene was most fun to play? And for Junior, which scene was most difficult and which scene was most surprising? Um, okay, well, I can probably safely speak for the both of us as far as what the hardest um, filming um, moment was. Um, so I'm, I'm reliving it right now as we've been talking to you. Um, it, was the t it was the moment where I am supposed to be in my car and I'm supposed to break down, and that was the most difficult. It was the last shot of of the uh, product in, in the US, just what we were filming. And it was, uh, gosh, it was the most, it was, it was uh, the hardest thing for me to do um, because I, it was the f first part of the day was filming the scene where I'm apologizing. And that worked out like in two takes. Um, three, and then when, when, when he saw tears, he's like, extreme close-up, extreme close-up. And I'm like, ah, and I'm like, I can't do it again. Um, <laughs> um, and then, uh, just because was, it was so real, it was so, it was so, you know, it was amazing. And then um, they did a bunch of shots with Naoto, and I, I was so tired, I took a nap. Um, <laughs> I took a nap for a while. Um, I think it could have been called a full-on sleep um, session. And then... Uh, it was around three o'clock, where or two o'clock, two or three o'clock, where, where they were like, "Hey, wake up, Eugene. We got to shoot that last scene where you're just crying in the car by yourself." And um, and I got in the car, and um, they're like, "All right, go." And I'm like, in the car, and I'm like, thinking like, "Okay, cry. Just okay, go back to, go back to Strasbourg. Go go back to method work. Okay, ah, ha, ah, 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 just kick out, ha." Ah. You know, and then I'm like, okay, my sister getting run over by a bus, my sister running over, my sister getting mauled by a cat, and I laughed, and then, and then like, my sister um, jumping off a cliff. No, she wouldn't do that. Why would you do that, Grace? And then uh, it wasn't working, and then there was, I don't know if you want me to, uh, how, I mean, like, I, <laughs> and like, Junior and I, by this point, we're like, <laughs> we're in such a safe place that, like, we trust each other, and he starts, um, I go outside, I was like, hey, I just need to, like, you need to breathe. I need to go outside. I need to take a moment. Um, and I was like, just like, come on, come on. You've done this in class so many times. You can cry. You can do this. And then Junior walks out and he starts slapping me in the face. Just like slapping me. And I'm like, you know, slaps. Come on, come on, get mad, get mad. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, Junior, I'm not feeling anything right now. I'm not, like, I don't need, this doesn't even hurt. Like, why, you know? And I wanted him to do it. I'm like, it, we were in that safe place. And then, and then I drove, and I drove off the permit area, and the cops came, pulled me over. Um, and then Junior, I was like, they're like telling us, like, hey, get out of the car. Why aren't you getting out of the car? Get out of the car. Um, and I'm like, Junior, you have to talk. You got to take care of this. And he, he goes out there. He jumps back. He goes, I'm sorry. I'm like, why? He's like, I told him you're a stand-up comedian that we're doing a documentary. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then... The, and then he was like, they want you to go over there. I'm like, what? Okay. And I walk over. They're like, okay, you're a stand-up comedian? Tell us a joke. <laughs> and this is like four in the morning. And I'm like, he's like, we're going to find you guys. We're going to like, if you, if you tell us a joke, prove that you're stand-up. We'll let you go. And I, I, I did, um, I did my, like, the first couple jokes that I normally do in, in a set. And they're like, they're like <laughs> okay. And then they drove off. And then... Uh, and that was like so, I felt so molested and, and dirty. And I was like, oh. And then I, and then we drove off and then a bunch of other things happened. And then I was like, all right, Junior, it's you and me. Let's get in the car. And I questioned everything about myself. I questioned who I, who, like, why am I out here? I've been studying for so long. And, and I've, I've done this before. I've cried before. I can't do it now. And I feel like I'm this porn star, I mean, no offense, I mean, that, <laughs> that, that can't get hard, who's like, a, you know, and I just, I don't know. And so I got in the car and I just started, I started just, I just hit the steering wheel. I just, I remembered hitting the steering wheel so hard and just screaming and just being like, I fucking, I honestly f hated myself at that moment. It was so, I mean, my, my coach has taught me how to be intimate in a scene and just to like focus and to not worry about what's going on or people feel, just to really, to the feeling of, of questioning my own existence at that moment was, was there and that's how we got there. Um, and, uh, and yeah. And so just for the record, I'm nice director. Yeah, no, he is, he is amazing. <laughs> uh, it sounds like awesome. I'm a shitty director. No, he's, no, he, he never is. slaps me, never. He's 
<laughs> he slapped. No, but like yeah. no, but that, that, I yeah. appreciated that because yeah. it was a culmination of a lot well, of he, things. He like, slapped me during the porn scene, but it was in the ass. But it, so yeah. the whole, it was on the, the wrong cheeks. Message. The wrong cheeks. Message. I was crying too, so it, was, it worked. It worked on my side. Yeah. But no, th yeah. So that was one so of. So you're not going to tell us a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm getting molested at the same time. Yeah. Sure. Um, that was the most difficult, I think. But the most fun, I think, was probably the cop scene. I think that was the most fun. Working with Michael was a privilege. Um, but the bar scene was a nightmare too. That was a nightmare of a scene to film. That was, that was, tr it was hot. It was really hard. That was hard. That it was. Uh, there was just so much holding for sound. There were planes and. Like for some reason, barrels rolling around in the basement, and then like extras talking and not stop. They're not talk. They're not. They won't stop talking. And there was a point. They're like first AD, second AD, first AD told him, Junior told him, and then I, in the middle of the take, I went, guys, you got to stop talking. We're not going to finish the scene. If we're going to stop. I'm like, ah, oh. it was just so. It was so frustrating. Um, but you just, you know, at, at a time like that, you just have to focus, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get back into it like a professional. You can't just, you can't crack because. They need to make their day. They, they, they have, there's only so many hours in the day to yeah, shoot. Yeah, we, we just didn't have, you know, luxury to go, you know, over time. So, uh, like, each day, like, we had 12, okay, if you go over, you know, we're out of visit, you know, we got to have to shut down the project. I mean, that, that was kind of a situation. So, I mean, a lot of times, like, you know, only two, two takes, two, three takes, mm -hmm. and uh, except the porno. Uh, we no, no, we had way too many takes. <laughs> well, like, the thing is, the porno shot, like, the, we, we had the crying scene and, all, you know, the why not die and all that. And I told Junior, it's like, I really, really want this for, for my demo reel. I want the scenes of me <laughs> whoring myself out and stuff like that on the streets and all that. So we actually were racing um, Buzz. Who was it? Buzz? Buzz. Was, they were like, you guys, we got we to gotta be on schedule. We got to do this and that. So, like, everything was like, like we felt like we we're racing against the clock all the time to try to get those shots in or else we don't get them. Yeah, I mean, that's the uh, indie world. You know, you just don't have a choice. You right. know? <laughs> but yeah. And the policeman scene is unforgettable. I, I'm shocked that you didn't pretend to be Japanese when this police car stopped you when you were out of your permit I territory. I done that, man. That would have... And you've never done that in your I've life. I've never done that. I honestly, honestly, talking about, you know, I, I just, I, I grew up, my parents wanted me to assimilate to the culture and they... They, they never, I, I, I'm a little resentful now. I really wish I could have learned a little bit more about my culture growing up. I really wish I could have, I could have learned how to speak um, Korean. I didn't have a grandma growing up, so that's kind of how you learn. If is a grandmother that just won't speak to you in English and won't respond to you if you, if you don't speak Korean back. But I, um, but I, now it's like being an actor, I, that's when I realized I was Asian. That, that's like, okay, you're going, you're an Asian. Okay, this is who you are. and and. You're you're going out for you know another North Korean you know terrorist and <laughs> it's and so I so yeah so that's I forgot what the question was what we're talking about um, talking about oh the oh yeah so I so yeah so I never ever tried doing the Asian accent anytime um, but uh, but yeah but it was based on a true story that actually happened to this guy where but it didn't work quite as well as it did in the movie <laughs> um, I think he probably just gave you a ticket anyway but. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, it was based on a true story. That's kind of sad with Asian American actors. Like, hey, bro, did you get that part as the terrorist? He's like, no, man. Oh, man, I like, wish. Well, I'm sorry. Damn it. Maybe next time you'll be the. <laughs> sorry, you didn't get the terrorist part. You know. So thank you for bringing the film to us this evening. Thanks for having us. It's been a Thank real you. pleasure. Thank you so much for staying, guys. Thank you guys. so much. Thank, Thank you. you for coming.